everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this month's article. I'm going to be talking to you about the new color grading tool in Lightroom Classic version 10. So we're going to go through the four steps on how to use this and how it's replaced the split toning uh, tool in Lightroom Classic to give you more control over your images. So like many of you, you might have already upgraded to the October 2020 release of Lightroom Classic version 10. Um, you have access to that in your Lightroom Cloud app. Um, so if you haven't already installed it or um, haven't updated or using a previous version, um, you know you might want to check out this video before you upgrade, especially check out the system requirements that are needed on the um, Adobe website to make sure your operating system, your RAM memory, all those things are in check before you upgrade. The pro um, program runs slow and you have new problems. So I'm going to be going through the new color grading tool and giving you those four steps on how to use it. So starting off, um, the first thing is going to be how to navigate the uh, global options versus the individual panels. So you'll notice that in each panel there are different color grading options, right? So you can adjust the shadows independent from the midtones, independent from the highlights. Um, so there's definitely a lot more flexibility and control over how you're um, adjusting each color grade versus the split toning tool, which this new color grading tool has replaced. Um, step two is going to be looking at this new luminance slider. Um, so you have the ability to adjust the luminance across your image to offer another way to recover tones um, or just offer a new unique way to um, you know, add some new tonal ranges to your images and for editing purposes. So we'll check into that. Um, on the individual panel side, you have a luminance slider as well as a global slider for um, the luminance. So brightness, luminance, nothing new with that tool. Uh, it's similar to HSL. There's the luminance panel within HSL, but instead of choosing specific colors, you're going to be choosing color ranges, uh, which is a little bit um, different. Um, and pretty cool for the creative adjustments that you can make. Uh, step number three is going to be looking at these blending sliders. So there's a blending and a balance slider. So understanding what the difference is between those and how each of those can um, affect your image. Step number four is going to be going through uh, my favorite part of Lightroom. It's creating presets, making an efficient workflow, and really navigating this tool to offer a little more flexibility on the creative side but also fixing some of those mixed lighting situations you have where you have daylight with some background warm artificial or even like fireplace lighting um, on how to use this tool to balance those two very distinctly different lighting sources. So uh, let's jump into step number one, uh, how to look at the detailed individual panels. All right, so in step number one, the first thing you need to uh, kind of understand with this new uh, color grading tool is that there are two different views. Um, there's a global view where you can see all three color grades as well as adjust the individual uh, luminance slider for each color grade as well as you can um, adjust the blending and the balance across these, right? And then so you have this kind of global multi um, view here. Um, the singular or individual global view, which will um, adjust the entire image, can be done here. Um, and then you have your individual panels for shadows, midtones, and highlights. So just jumping into that, my first instinct on an image like this with the groom and the window and a portrait where it's a little more chiaroscuro lighting, it's a little bit darker shadows, heavier highlights, but you're trying to recover or balance the brightness for all these highlights hitting the white shirt and his face is I like to add some cool tones to the shadows. I know that's pretty popular and I can grab this dot here in the middle to start to navigate what hue I want, but then also how much saturation I want to apply. Um, so real quick, if I want to hold the option key while I'm clicking right here on the circle inside of this color wheel, if I hold option, it'll make a micro adjustment for satur um, saturation. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm sliding saturation closer to the edge of the wheel to really intensify um, this effect. So as I kind of cool the, ca the shadows down here, I can jump into my highlights individual panel and I can do the same thing, but I can add some 
yellows there, right? So I can add this really cool effect. We see on the left-hand side, it's my color corrected, my go-to style edit. On the right-hand side here, I have this cooler shadows, warmer highlights, just kind of different looking image altogether. It might not be my final edit, but it's just a quick way to offer a color grading effect. And it's kind of my go-to look. I like that, um, that kind of style. And I'll play with that, especially with when there's like a darker suit, black suit, you know, I'm not so worried about the, the blues happening in the suits. I mean, okay with that shift. Um, Cause if it's a creative edit, I'm gonna offer it to the client um, to show them something a little more creative, something a little bit different or off the beaten path, so to speak. Um, so jumping into uh, the individual panels, I can do the same thing, right, with midtones. I have the same ability to make adjustments with hue and saturation, and that's uh, that's the kind of beauty of this um, this tool because I have multiple views, if you will, on how I want to adjust my images, and I can look here at kind of a a um, you know, 40,000 foot view, if you will, of the individual panels. I can come in here and make those adjustments as well. I don't really have as much control, but if I want to kind of do everything quickly here, maybe I want to add some reds into the midtones, maybe not, um, <laughs> right? I can go back and just reset the midtones independent of the shadow. So if I don't like the shadow adjustment, I can just turn it off and I can toggle my little light switch here to see what those adjustments are. So I have all that kind of flexibility and go back here a couple steps to kind of add some more um, adjustments here. So with that on and off, you have a lot of kind of views and uh, flexibility and control with this color grading tool. So those are the individual panels going through the shadows to the midtones and the highlights. Nothing too crazy, um, but let's jump into the other slider options that we have here, the luminance, the blending, and the balance. All right, so step number two is going to be utilizing this luminance slider. So on each individual panel, I can adjust the luminance independent of each other. So if I want to adjust the brightness in just the highlights range of an image like this, I can easily do that by dropping that luminance down and it's automatically going to just brighten those tones in the image. Um, so what I like to do with this is it gives me a little more of a tonal or kind of a creative adjustment that I can do, right? So um, I'm in the shadows here, excuse me, I said highlights earlier, um, but if I wanna drop the brightness down and kind of add some more density back into this image and even kind of do a, a highlight recovery, um, I can do that quite quickly. Let me show you real quick here. I'm gonna turn the shadows back to where they were, but in the highlights, I, I have another ability or another tool to kind of add some highlight recovery. Now it's gonna make those highlights gray um, so to speak, and kind of lose their color. So that's something you really want to kind of be careful of and making sure we're not, um, you know, dulling those, those too much. But you can kind of see the difference between the, uh, you know, with the adjustment and without it. It just kind of adds almost like a white um, slider effect there. And I can just do it to the highlights. If I want to boost the midtones, um, I absolutely can. So now we kind of have the ability to adjust the brightness just on the um, midtones, and then if I want to take the luminance down, right, kind of going the opposites in all directions, I can. So I can take my image here and kind of add a whole contrast or tonal approach to the image. Um, that just becomes a little bit different, right? So I can limit those different ranges. Now I kind of flatten the contrast. It might not be as attractive on the skin tones, um, but it just kind of gives me, you know, some different options there just to kind of show how the luminance slider can be used independent of the um, hue and saturation slider. So if you're not even looking at using the color grading in that sense, you can kind of just use the luminance slider to adjust some of those things. And if we come back in here into this panel, we can individually adjust each one of those luminance um, panels and kind of add, you know, a little more harsh kind of harshness to that if we want to so if we want to kind of take those back maybe even you know, I don't think I want to lift the luminance and the shadows too much there but you kind of get the gist of the you know how luminance is working and this you know this is a little bit different than the luminance than you're used to in the HSL panel right so um, in this panel here you know I I'm adjusting quite a lot um, per color um, 
so I have a little more flexibility in the whole um, color range uh, specifically if I'm making those adjustments here uh, so a little bit of a more of an interesting um, aspect but I think it becomes a little more um, useful when you're using the uh, luminance slider when you're going into the individual panels and for instance if I'm wanting to add kind of a you know if I want to use something maybe like a global effect here and I want to add like a kind of a warming filter here Maybe just not so heavy. Hold option. And just kind of make a subtle push. Um, I can add just a little bit of warmth in there and then come back into my um, luminance. If I want to zero those out, let's go back here. If I want to come in and just reset the luminance for each individual panel, then I can go into my global adjustment, you know, kind of drop that down, add it however I want to use that, almost just like a general brightness slider. But then that gives me a little more flexibility for um, how I want to apply my split toning across my image here. It looks kind of bluish and cool. And I can add that just that kind of warming effect to the entire image. So um, definitely have some flexibility with the luminance slider. But let's look at the balance and blending um, that can be used on each individual slider to kind of show the difference in how that tool works. All right. So step number three is going to be um, using the balance and the blending slider. So on the individual. Um, on your individual color grades, you have the ability to blend or balance um, these uh, hue and saturation and luminance adjustments that you're making. So what's interesting about the blending is that um, blending is a little bit different than balance, right? So blending is going to allow you to overlap colors or in the name itself, blend them together. So it's going to allow um, colors to become a little more um, rich, but you can, you know, use this slider to um, add more color between the ranges or if you want to isolate the specific range and more specifically like right now I'm in the color range shadows or I'm in midtones. So in adjusting the balance slider um, versus the blending slider moving them left to right is going to alter how they're working. So starting with the um, balance slider which is the bottom option here if I want to extend this like an adjustment that I'm making, so for instance, if in the midtones I am uh, making a decision to uh, add some more orange tones because I kind of want this image to have even more of a fall or autumn look to it, you know, I'll take this image and kind of add some orange there, right? So. On the right, you're seeing my adjustment. On the left is before. I mean, of course, I can do it, you know, and just toggle um, the image like this too. But just to kind of bring back in some warm orange tones to the midtones, I can do that. There's a lot of midtones happening here, so this image is almost just kind of naturally warmed up. Um, but I'm bringing some more of that warmth back to it, right? Creative decision. So what I want to show you is in doing that in the midtones, if with my balance slider, if I move um, the, the balance slider to the left here, it's going to extend more specifically here. So if I'm in the midtones, um, and it's a little bit different actually with you know the shadow adjustment versus the highlight adjustment, the way you're moving these um, sliders are going to kind of change. So if I'm looking at the ability to isolate the midtones, right, I'm doing that by moving that to the left. Um, now, if I wanted to extend those tones to the other ranges, I move it to the right, right? So it's going to allow me to kind of make that adjustment 
and kind of bol uh, balance that between bringing it, bringing those tones to, excuse me, changing this color grading, um, shifting it to the highlights and shadows versus isolating it to the midtones. So if I hold the Option key, you can see where the orange is going and how it's kind of shifting, right? So if we're in the midtones here and I'm taking it to the left, you can see how the orange is kind of just shifting all into the other tones where if I drag it to the right see how it's isolating it to just the midtones so this is this is in the midtones is like kind of balanced in the middle but if I shift it to the right it actually allows me to decrease that amount specifically in just the midtones versus allowing it to bleed or um, you know extend into the other colors so as you go into each each specific um, color range it's going to do that same thing so if I wanted to add I'm just going to add some cool tones to kind of counter this look if I wanted to balance it and I want to extend it into the other ranges right I'm going to blend it and go to the left. And you see how cool this image got across the whole thing. So if I'm holding Option, it's going to show that blue. While I'm moving the slider, it's going to show blue going into the entire image. So this is extending it to the other ranges, the midtones and highlights. Whereas if I go to the right, it's actually removing it down and, and, and removing it completely from, um, from the shadow. So I can actually I have another ability to kind of decrease that effect where balance becomes a little more useful if I think it was too heavy for some reason there and I didn't want to just you know kind of come into the saturation I mean you it's kind of redundant I mean you could just lower the saturation here or drag it to the right but I think it would be more for balancing and letting it bleed into the other colors so that's making sense right just extending that tone into those ranges and if you hold option it gives you more of a visual of that change and so highlights same way if I wanted to make an adjustment specifically in the highlights and if I reset my midtones and reset my shadows so you can see a full the full effect here um, let's add some orange into those tones there so as I'm dragging the balance slider to the right see now it's balancing I mean it's kind of going to the entire image so you can see how it's increasing into the other ranges as well versus just here just in the highlights kind of subtle but you can see it kind of um, creep into the uh, midtones and shadows now if I drag it to the left that's where I can control how much it's how much it's being applied in just the highlights right so if that's making sense on where the balance um, slider comes in I'm still learning a little bit about that tool myself and how to kind of utilize it but holding option kind of gives you the ability to kind of decrease or do even more of a micro um, you know a micro adjustment that you're making to the uh, to that slider so um, well not as much to this slider here but in, t in your sl saturation slider holding option um, but the, this balance slider here kind of lets me do a micro adjustment of what I want to do in just the highlight range right if I want to do something subtle um, as well so moving into the blending slider it's gonna allow you to kind of overlap colors so it makes sense to kind of see it in the same, um, using that same masking tool um, while I'm holding option. So um, if I wanted to, I'm gonna leave this orange and leave it pretty saturated. Now if I want to move the blending slider, what I can do is I can start to move the slider, right? Fully to the left, fully to the right, but if I hold option, it's gonna show me where my masking is. So blending, you can see how rich this image gets by going to the right and I think it's the same right so blending and balance are gonna kind of work in the same way and it, on highlights specifically you move them to the right it's going to um, affect the other tones you move it to the left and it's gonna start to isolate right so um, this just becomes before and after um, kind of allows you to do some blending so it's going to add some colors um, it's going to overlap those colors I mean again 
Um, you know, these sliders can be, you know, a little more touch and go with as you get, you know, kind of more used to the tool. Um, it's a newer tool and kind of getting, um, you know, more flexibility out of your color grading. I think these could be um, very useful um, as you're kind of dialing in very specific tones or if you're wanting um, specific images with more, um, you know, differentiating colors. You know, if you have like a warmer and a cooler background. Um, or warmer back, uh, warmer subject, cooler background, and you want to kind of blend those two things together using these tools. I think that that could be a very, very useful way to use blending and balance. Otherwise, I kind of leave them alone, and I'm making most of my adjustments just in the um, in the individual panels for hue, saturation, and luminance. Not really messing with the blending balance too much, um, but give it a try. See what you think. All right, so step number four, and my favorite one, it's make. Lightroom as efficient as possible, right? So if I'm making a color grading adjustment on a specific image, um, I can actually sync it to multiple images of that same sequence. So if I'm making a sequence specific adjustment, something that wouldn't make sense for a preset, but um, if I wanted to correct something like this fireplace in the background that's super orange, um, super warm, and then the daylight that's hitting him is just warm enough, but it's not as vibrant. So if I wanted to take uh, specifically the highlights in this image and I wanted to add some warmth to them or some orange tones I could right so I could add some warmth kind of toggle that see how that's looking I mean, it's adding a little bit of warmth on there but not really hitting his face too much so maybe I want to move into the midtones and add some more warming effects like that and now I can kind of see right where I was here. Just adding a little bit of warmth there kind of starts to make his skin look a little less um, in contrast to that uh, fire in the background. So what I like about that is I can also take the luminance down if I want to, right? Just in those tones. I can increase the saturation. I can lower it. Um, I think that that looks fine. Then I can right use the blending and balance. So in this kind of a situation, if I wanted to isolate or extend, I could extend that tone to the background so it kind of works well. Same way with blending. I don't think I'm getting too much of an adjustment there, so I'd probably leave those as is. Maybe take the entire luminance down in the image to kind of add a little more mood, right? So like it's taking the image from here to here. Right? I like the way that this is looking. This is um, you know, edited a little bit better, um, a little bit closer in the warmth between uh, skin tones in the background. Um, so now I could take that adjustment, showing my film strip here, and if I wanted to sync those, I can. Right. So now we have this awesome um, option or the replacement of split toning with the color grading tool. And if I wanted to sync those to kind of get them dialed in, I can. So now it kind of gives that effect here as where I have it in both images. So um, in Lightroom, syncing settings, of course, nothing new about that. Um, but what's pretty cool is you can also create a color grading specific. If I wanted to you know, create a color grading preset, you know, if I already, if I already have one named um, in there and I want to create a new one, I can come in here and just call you know, this one fireplace. Um, or, you know, warm midtones, you know, whatever I want to do. And now I can start to build color grading effects, right? If I have a mixed lighting one that I want to use or a midtones, I mean, I kind of have these two different presets to use. And so, same thing here, right? So, if I want to add I don't think it's really going to make sense for this image um, in particular, but I can create different color grading tools. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reset that. Um, different color grading tools for any of these images. So creating presets, things like that, becomes a lot more um, efficient and the ability to apply it to multiple images right in grid mode um, becomes very useful um, to apply a preset to multiple images at once. Um, so moving into another um, 
you know, efficient way to use this tool is you can use the eyedropper tool. Um, so the eyedropper tool becomes available to you in the global panel or in either um, any of the individual color grade panels. So for instance, if I wanted to adjust this entire image and I wanted to color grade it to maybe match these um, indoor incandescent lights here, I can click on uh, this little square here, click grab the eyedropper and kind of select right inside those lights. Now what that does is it automatically finds that specific color and tone and just applies it to the entire image, right? So it just kind of gives a little more of a moodier light. Now if it's too much for me or I want to, you know, adjust that, I can always just drop the saturation where I can dial that in, I can drop the luminance down um, on this entire image if I wanted to kind of mess with that. I don't think in an image like this I would want to, uh, but something maybe in the shadows I could come in here and just add a little more luminance, boost the highlights a little bit, and come into the midtones, Maybe add a little cooling effect. No, I don't think I don't think so. Um, so I mean, you have right a lot of kind of flexibility to adjust your images. I mean, there's not really one way to do it, um, but you have you know you can kind of take your image on the left here, which is just kind of corrected and simple. Add a little more of a you know a warming effect to the final image here. Just looks you know, a little bit better in color than the before. You know, of course, you could probably just warm the image up, add a little contrast, right, from a surface view. Um, but there's a few other, you know, adjustments that we're making in here that we have that ability to do in this, um, with the eyedropper tool, uh, more specifically. So, um, you know, the last kind of tip in this tool as well is understanding how to reset um, globally. You can hold Option and you get the reset option, which will reset the entire image. You can um, reset this in, by individual um, color grades as well. Um, so if you just want to reset you know, the shadows, you can, or vice versa. If you want to you know, reset the midtones, any of those can be done um, as well, so you don't have to reset your entire tool or turn the um, light switch on and off, which I think makes it a lot easier for you to make make adjustments and, and kind of go back. But you can also kind of view what the image would look like with or without that effect on. Uh, so color grading's added, um, you know, quite a few options here. Like I said, my uh, my go-to is is typically adding some cool tones to the shadows as well as um, you know, adding some warmth to the uh, to the highlights. Uh, I like that look, but I mean, again, this is a, a tool that you can use, you know, whether it's about creative adjustments or you're correcting mixed lighting. I think it has a lot of, um, you know, good use and, um, you know, will be a tool that will um, offer a little more flexibility in your editing. All right, so now that we've gone through the four steps on how to use the uh, color grading tool and more specifically in Lightroom, um, you know, before you go out and update to Lightroom version 10, right, you might be in the thick of busy season or maybe this is the best time for you to, you know, do some upgrades or some updates to your system, but I definitely recommend checking out the system requirements for Adobe. Um, you know, you don't want to... Uh, you know, try and download, up, update this um, uh, version of Lightroom Classic. Then you have to do an operating system update. Then you find out that, you know, your video card enhancements are making Lightroom um, version 10 slower. Um, there's a lot of bugs, you know, typically with the first new version of anything. Um, so I highly recommend uh, waiting for that first patch or two or doing some research online of some issues that people are running into. But this tool is available for you to use. It's in Lightroom version 10, so if you want to use the color grading tool, you're going to have to upgrade, as well as Camera Raw. You'll have to upgrade as well to get those features in Adobe Camera Raw for Photoshop. So, um, you know, take some time, tinker around with the uh, color range tool if you have upgraded 
um, you know, the most important thing to think about, and especially with Lightroom, is how are you going to use this tool? Is this going to save you time? Is this going to give you just more ways to make your images look muddier or uh, confuse the editing process? I mean, color grading is is a um, a very common um, and standard practice for video work, and it's slowly creeped its way into photography. I mean, photographers have been using um, color grading styles for a while, especially in Photoshop, and different ways to kind of shift your images or color, or you know, offer a kind of gradation of color. So there's nothing new to that um, particular aspect, but having it in Lightroom to have a quicker proof level view, I think is pretty awesome. I love Lightroom for its fast and quick ability to see changes, to see effects versus Lightroom, it's a little clunky, or excuse me, Photoshop's a little clunkier, it's one image at a time, it's running actions, it's just a much slower process. So I love the pace of Lightroom and this color grading tool. Um, the flexibility between multiple individual panels or global, um, the fact that I have this luminance, blending and balance sliders, I mean, I'm sure there's more use for those to come as they spend more time in the tool itself. Um, but I, uh, you know, I, I definitely implore you to create some presets, use this for some creative editing when you're done with production, right? So when you're done with the color correction, um, when you're done with editing, color grading should come in as that final process before output. Um, so you can apply those, um, you know, those different creative or, um, you know, mixed lighting, kind of more of a corrective adjustment when you have some nastier light going on, um, it becomes a useful tool to apply to multiple images in grid mode. So try it out today. Um, take some time to get used to it. Hopefully these four steps help you utilize the tool and uh, check in next month.